So there's one really big regret that I have in practice that I wish I had the information that I had now back then because the advice I gave on this one topic was very bad advice. I used to recommend 1,200 milligrams of calcium to people, especially postmenopausal women, for bone health, okay? And especially if they had any type of osteopenia or osteoporosis. I mean, check this out. If you have someone with osteoporosis, obviously they're missing calcium in the bone. That's true. Almost every osteoporotic person without exception also at the same time has excess calcium outside their bone. In 15 independent clinical trials, they found an increased risk, 30% for heart attacks, a 20% increase in strokes just by taking an extra 500 milligrams of calcium per day. In another study involving 61,000 people over 19 years, there was a pretty strong correlation between people taking over 1,400 milligrams of calcium per day and a 114% increase in dying from heart attacks. You just go to the store and, and look at the vitamin bottles, right? Look at the one-a-days. What's the first ingredient? Calcium carbonate. Notice how heavy that bottle is because most of that product is calcium carbonate. You're basically eating rocks. I mean, when you think about it, how is that affecting the heart? How is it affecting the tissues with all this calcium? One third of all adults in America over the age of 45 have some type of calcification in their arteries. So this idea that if we just take calcium, it'll go right to the bones is not true. Yes, we have the calcium in the bone, but also calcium has other functions, especially all the different communication between the cells use calcium. You have the intracellular calcium and you have the extracellular calcium outside. In fact, you have a lot more extracellular calcium. You have a thousand to 10,000 times more extracellular calcium right here than inside your cell. And so when this cell builds up too much intracellular calcium, it commits suicide. And check out this next point. Calcium accumulation is an independent factor of risk of all-cause mortality. And check this out. People that are taking calcium channel blockers, normally you probably know they're taking it for high blood pressure. But did you know that it creates other effects? It can also help improve chronic diseases, including you know, ALS, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. It can decrease the risk from coronary artery spasm, angina. There's one study that shows that taking calcium channel blockers decreases the risk of all-cause mortality. What does this tell you about calcium in our bodies? But the point is that this drug has multiple effects that go beyond just blood pressure, which is very interesting. So since we're on the topic of osteoporosis or bone loss, and what should you do instead of taking massive amounts of just calcium to try to fix that? If you ever look up the condition called scurvy, which is an advanced vitamin C deficiency, and you read all of the side effects of scurvy, you're going to see one of them called bone resorption. So in other words, a severe vitamin C deficiency causes calcium to leach out from your bone. Another symptom of scurvy is decreased synthesis of collagen. Synthesis means the production of something. I mean, think about what bone really is. A lot of it's collagen, protein. And so if you don't have enough vitamin C, you can't make that collagen. Another symptom of scurvy is something called osteolysis. What does that mean? That means the destruction of bone. Another symptom is osteonecrosis. That's a similar thing that means death of your bone. As I continue down the list of scurvy, I also found osteopenia as well as osteoporosis. I also found another side effect of oxidative stress, aka a lot of inflammation. And the last side effect that I found, which was very revealing, is calcification outside the bone. And so what would be the remedy for osteopenia or osteoporosis? Well, one big thing that I would recommend is therapeutic doses of vitamin C. And as I did a deep dive into this topic, you're not going to be able to 
fix your osteoporosis or osteopenia just by normal amounts of vitamin C. You're not going to even create a dent into that problem. You may need to use another type of vitamin C. So you can use ascorbic acid or another one that might be good is magnesium ascorbate. Why? Because the magnesium is really good to help lower the pathogenic calcification problem that we're trying to deal with here. And the amounts that I would recommend of this vitamin C would be minimally 6,000 milligrams per day. Now, uh, there's a lot of research on this, not just for osteoporosis, for other things, but 6,000 plus. So some people need to go a lot higher. Okay. Now, I would recommend breaking it up into two or four doses. And one way to determine if you're taking too much is if you have diarrhea. Okay, because that's one of the side effects. So you want to take a certain amount until maybe your stools are loose and then back off a little bit. Having enough vitamin C can suppress the cells that break down your bone. And those cells are called osteoclasts. And having enough vitamin C can help the absorption of calcium in your bone. And this is that regret is when I used to recommend these calcium supplements. I don't recommend that, okay? Now you can get enough calcium just from a little bit of cheese. But the point is, if you have excess soft tissue calcium, you don't want to be guzzling gallons of milk all day long. Definitely not the calcium supplements. Antacids. Now, I'm not telling you not to take your antacids, but antacids a lot of times involve taking calcium. And then you're going to neutralize the stomach acid, which helps you absorb calcium. Check with your doctor to see if you really need to take that antacid. It may be contributing to your extracellular, extra calcium problem that you have. And don't forget about the magnesium. Magnesium is a natural calcium channel blocker. Also, vitamin K2. A K2 deficiency is the most reliable predictor of vascular calcification. And of course, if you're dealing with osteopenia or osteoporosis, a good trace mineral complex would be good. So you get all the different trace minerals as well as consuming high quality protein in your diet, like red meat. Very, very healthy. Eggs are good, but uh, red meat is going to be the best protein to build bone. Now, if you have not seen my video related to calcium, milk, and phosphorus, I put that up right here. Because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side.